Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hangar Flying, episode 24. Hard to believe it's been six months, and we've been having some beautiful fall weather. So today we're going to update you on the Project Tiger, as well as our usual mixed bag of tricks. Please enjoy and get out and see some of the beautiful fall weather that's leaving us today. So we would like to ask you, please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. One of the nice things about living in the Midwest, I moved up from the Deep South, is that here in Ohio, we get some beautiful falls. Now, sometimes they're dry and the colors just turn brown and fall out of the trees. But because of the rain we've had this last month, it's absolutely beautiful. And here's some video, I'm sorry, here's a photo I shot back in 1997 of what it would look like in lower Michigan as I was going back and forth to Detroit. So it all depends on the weather. We've had a beautiful year of rain. We've got gorgeous fall color. The front just came through. The east coast is now getting the rain that came through yesterday and the storm last night took all the leaves out of the trees. So we're back to having pretty much bare trees. Now here's the update for you on the Project Tiger. We're in the process of having our new Dynon panel made and it's going to be here later on this month, probably a little bit right after Thanksgiving, and we'll be installing it in the airplane. Meanwhile, between all the other work we have going on, we're going to be taking the panel that's currently in the Project Tiger out of the airplane, and that will give us the interior out, and then we can get in there and we can change all the brake hoses that are up by the firewall that will with the rudder pedals we can change all those six hoses we can get everything clean and we can start knocking off things on the annual checklist so that's what we're going to be doing while we're waiting on the project panel to come in so that we'll have that to install and then we'll go ahead and bring you up to date on the other items and responding to some viewer comments, we've decided that at the end of every one of our videos, each month we will have a new little clip. So like here we were back in uh, August looking at the new kittens that had just come to join our family. And then we have a close that we did in the end of October. So for that month of October, you got to see what the kittens were doing, playing with paper and boxes on the floor. And now we have the November videos out and they're all being closed with the little snippet of the kids um, just destroying the plant by the window so every month in the future we're going to have a new little clip which will help us organize when the videos were made somewhere down the road so stay tuned for all of that fun and we also did a video on the yellow cross check torque stripe and this is what we use in the shop we have it in a variety of colors so we can match your paint scheme but we were just giving you an fyi on this nice product the good thing about the torque stripe is that when you put it on if anything moves, it's a very fragile material, it will shatter, and then you'll know that something has moved, and that's why it's called torque seal. As long as it's in good shape, you know that there's been no anti-torque motion on the bolt that you're looking at. And then we did a video on the GAES, that's Grumman American Engineering Services Parts. And in the particular case, we used the 1024-1. It's the little bolt that holds the hat washer in. And we're all using AN5-7 with a star washer. But again, we did a video on some of the specialized Grumman hardware, uh, just the bolt, but we do have special bushings as well. And then we talked about preheat, but we also specifically talked about the Tannis heater. Now we are exchanging our Tannis heater um, for a brand new one. It's already arrived and it's sitting on top of the uh, Project Tiger engine waiting for us to get it installed. But we have chosen Tannis and we did a video on that. The good thing about the Tannis is that you get all the hookups to keep the cylinders warm as well as the oil in the oil sump. So always a good deal when you're flying in a cold climate to have your engine for longevity be warm before you start it. Now some of you may have noticed that we have a new intro and what we did was we used the uh, Luma box. We have Grumman pilots you're looking through into a scene and it's our opening of Cheetah Flight. But anyway, we had a viewer send us some information on a cheetah that he had found. And if you look at the pictures you can see that these go from late spring through about the fall of this year. So we have a video out there on the restoration and Anthony did a good job. He found this cheetah, he took it home, he stripped it. He repainted it, took it back to the airport, reassembled it, and here it is sitting out on the ramp now at this time of year getting wet in the fall weather. But again, another good job. It's not hard to do. Let me mention a little bit about advice on this. Luanna was having a 
a field day the other day when I was telling her about this guy did all this work without any advice from me. But then she remembers back in 2007 to the 2008 time frame when Jim, Jimmy Candeletti called me every day looking for advice on how to take apart his airplane and restore it and get it ready for 2008. So there's a little takeaway. So again, user supplied video. Anthony did a great job on this cheetah makes me so happy to see an airplane like that rescued and not rotting away on some airport ramp. We also had a redo video on the restoration of your main landing gear where we take everything apart, we bead blast it, alodyne it, acid etch it, prime it, paint it, and put it all back on with new hardware. The good thing about the redo of the main gear restoration video is that we put all the hardware for each stage in there. And as you'll find out, there's not a whole lot of hardware required, but it does add up. And each gear leg will take about $15 of hardware in terms of the bolts and all to get it done. That's not counting your tire and your tube. But again, it's where you can start working on your airplane. You don't have to do it all at once. You can do the main gear, then you can do the nose gear. You can work your airplane piece by piece until you find Finally wind up with a product that you're really happy with and with Christmas coming we were at Home Depot the other day buying some stuff for the hangar and we came across these little LED lights what's nice about them is they work off a of three AA battery so you don't need a power cord they are very bright we took them out on the hangar last night and looked at them they have magnets on the back to hold it against metal and with the little handle and the little bracket on the back you can position it to shine light where you need it so if you need auxiliary lighting for a video here's a light source if you're working on an airplane in a tight place and you don't want to take a power cord with you here's another solution for getting light where you're working so anyway they're available they're a little under 13 dollars at home depot we don't get any money off of this just letting you know here's a nice little light and don't be surprised if you get one for Christmas from us this year. Now here's a little treat for you. Many years ago before I got a chance to go back to school and start working on my degrees, I worked in a tobacco shop and I'm a registered tobacconist with Dunhill of London and as we were cleaning up the house from the windows and doors we had put in, I came across some of my Dunhill lighter stuff, my flints, my butane, the carry case. My lighter needed a little bit of repair so it got boxed up and off it is going to a repair station in the Philippines to be completely overhauled. I mean, this lighter was $675 back in the day. It's gold, it's handmade in Switzerland, it has blue laplaz on the case, and I wanted to keep it and have it working nice, so we sent it off. It was about $100 to get overhauled, and re remarking how much cheaper it is to have a lighter overhauled than it is to have an aircraft instrument overhaul. But anyway, I know a lot of people don't get to see these old lighters. They are handmade and very nice to have, and... Uh, Anyway, there's a little treat for you, a blast from the past, and this is a 1970s Dunhill lighter. Now, here's the first ever picture we had taken of the Grumman Gang. This is from August of 1996 up in Stratford, Ontario. If anybody's got an original copy of this, the original picture was taken by Glenn Hadley. But if you've got a copy, we'd like to get a new one. We're going to be shooting a new picture this coming June at uh, KHAO at our summer gathering. In the meanwhile, I'll throw you in a couple of pictures of the kittens, a basket full of kittens, and our bag kitten. Enjoy this. And by the way, here's the original carling switch that comes on our flaps. Now, this was in the two place. We've gone to a different switch. It's the same basic type of switch, but again, it's a carling switch just like our rocker panels and the cover. And then Jimmy Candeletti needed a airbox uh, thing. We had one in spare. We took it out, we boxed it up, and we shipped it off to him. So we do have a few pieces left for you. And then as we were cleaning up around, we found a nice picture that we're going to show you in a minute. While we were going through getting some stuff organized, we found a picture from back in the day. This is at Butler County, but here's everybody at a fly-in. All the GPA members, including Ron Mallory, they're on the left. And by the way, our Shop Monkey shirts are starting to catch on. Here's a gentleman from high school who likes our Shop Monkey, and he works on cars. So don't be surprised if you see a few more Shop Monkey shirts floating around. Now, here's Yankee number one. This is the first Yankee built. NASA used it for its spin testing. It now hangs in a museum in Virginia. But uh, Yankee number two is being restored down in Georgia. Lou Evans uh, will be sending us an update of photos as he gets some work accomplished. But again, here's Yankee number one, the girl who started it all off. 
And there's been some discussion on the Grumman Gang about magnetos and electronic ignitions, including the Surefly magnetos. And by the way, the gaps are different between the one on the left is a 36 thousandth and the one on the right is a 17 thousandth. So there is a difference in your plug gapping depending on what kind of ignition system you're using. Now we've been working on airplanes and uh, the ones that are coming in we just had an airplane stop and visit us now this is a picture of a traveler we actually had a Grumman Tiger stop in the other day it had just come out of annual the owner had a new engine the motor mount had been reworked he had a bunch of work done on the airplane he was in the area to visit family and he wanted to bring it by and let us take a quick look at it for him to show us his nice new airplane and we found nine items wrong with his airplane now we fixed them all and it took four hours to do it but anyway let's go through the list of the items that we found now we're covering these in no in particular order of importance or what order we did the work in but we found the engine hook for picking up the engine was up and it was rubbing on the cowling we loosened it and dropped it over we also found that the new baffle seals on the front of the engine had not been slitted therefore they were not making a good seal we found zip ties on the motor mount, which we cut them all off and put them back on with some protector on the motor mount. You don't want to have any rust forming there. We found the throttle bug on the throttle was not safety and could come off. The canopy tracks and rails were extremely dirty. The canopy had to come off. All that got cleaned. The JPI oil probe was on the back of the engine and JPI wants the oil probe to pick up the pressure on the front of the engine. We also found that the fuel pump drain was not out through the bottom of the cowling. Same issue on the carb air box drain. It was not out the bottom of the cowling. And we found a cowling crack up near the top near the firewall near the latch. And we installed Ken's cow bumpers to address that problem in the future. We fixed the crack. And with the cow bumpers, we should be relieving the strain. And we shouldn't be having any cracks forming in the future from that location. And the radiant floor in Bay Charlie of T11 is now up and running. So we now have another warm hangar bay. Uh, the engine shop is really enjoying the warmer weather. And, but we did finally get the radiant floor up and running. We'll be doing a complete video on that for you. Again, we're expecting this to be just kind of like the one that we have in Alpha, where we spent $500 last year to keep our entire hangar warm. And finally, we wanted to close with this for you. We're looking here under normal lighting. We're looking at our sun porch in the back. And this is the year this last summer we painted the entire back porch with a new coat of paint. It looks pretty good in normal lighting. Now we have a UV light that we used the other day. And with the UV light, what we're looking for is to be able to come and find debris on the wall because we're moving everything off, getting all the plants in the house. And we just want to make sure that the nice new paint stays looking good. And you can see a little bit of dirt there in the paint from where the plants were, but that washes right off. But then we're going to be looking at all this under normal lighting. Now we're also going to be looking at our kind of our control space. Now this back section of the porch, we don't have any birds in the corner, so the cats never go in this location. So again, this is our nice control area, and we'll be looking at all this under UV light right now. And here are the cats. They love playing in the windows, looking at the birds during the day, watching the leaves blow that are coming out of the trees right now. And again, they have a really good time on the back porch. And there's old Sweet Pea just looking cute as ever. Now in the twilight, we went back out on the porch with the UV light and we're checking the walls. And what we're finding is that we don't have any stains in this control area where the cats never go. So we're feeling pretty good about all of this. And as you can see, it's not fluorescing anything on the wall. And again, this is in twilight. We could kind of have a, a little bit of difference. And that's a tennis ball on the floor right here the cats love playing with. But this control section is nice and clear. Now again, this is in twilight, and this is where the plants were. And as you can see, there's a little bit of fluorescence that we're seeing coming off the walls. Now, we don't know what it is, and we will be addressing it with some cleaners to keep our paint looking nice. But under the UV light, we're finding these stains that uh, we can't really explain, but it's only where the cats go. So that kind of gives us a hint. And so here you can see it. You don't see it in the normal lighting, but it shows up under the UV. It even wrapped around on the corner of the porch, even onto the brick. Now it's on one side of the door on the brick, but not on the other side of the door. So we're trying to piece it all together. But again, a good thorough washing. We're going to be using some Melaleuca products as long as some Lysol and probably some Clorox bleach to get back down to the clean paint. But we thought you'd get a kick out of what having a UV light can help you determine. Now let's go look at it under full dark. 
And while we're in the dark right here, that beam you're seeing, it's coming from a light called the UV Beast. We bought one, and we ended up sending one to Mark and Kelly since we know their affection for cats. But here in the full dark, on our control section, you'll see there's really nothing in the paint uh, fluorescing. So we know that that's all good and clear. So now let's move over to the other side where we can examine it. Uh, this is the brick from the other day when they were installing the window. Now let's move on to the other others. Again, this is in full dark, so you're seeing all the fluorescence on the wall from dirt and debris, whatever that happens to be, which we will be cleaning. So be careful if you go and get a big UV light. It comes in handy for magnafluxing and checking for cracks and stuff like that, but uh, it can also help you find out how clean or unclean your house is. So, ladies and gentlemen, with this little bit of UV light in the twilight of the day, we hope you found this episode 24, hard to believe it's been six months on the Project Tiger. We hope you found all this useful and informative. Thanks for watching, and have a great day flying your Grumman. So you've met Freckles, our cat supervisor, but here are the new cats destroying the Avery Island Tabasco pepper that sits by her back door. So I thought you'd enjoy watching them destroy something that doesn't belong to you.